forever and ever. Amen. Yes, Thank you. Yes, forever and ever. to give me the strength to get through this eulogy because uh, there's so much I want to share and I'm mindful of the time. <clears throat> Firstly, I would like to give honour to the Holy Spirit and also would like to greet and honour Overseer Vaughan, First Lady Mother Vaughan, pastors, ministers, singers, musicians and saints in the mighty name of Jesus. On behalf of the family, I would like to expre express my sincere gratitude to all present today. Thank you for taking the time to celebrate and honour the life of my grandma, Eva Christian. We are all here today because in some special way you knew my grandmother. She was loving, kind, humble, loyal, funny and so much more. King David the psalmist once said, with long life I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. God blessed my grandmother with long life and she lived until the blessed age of 90 years old. There are so many things that I could share about her today, but we would be here all day. Words cannot express how much she meant to me, her family, friends and community. Grandma was my best friend my special person, so I'm honoured today to do her eulogy. Eva Christian was born on the 13th of September 1932 in Buff Bay, Portland, Jamaica. She had four siblings called Olga, Kenute, Dolly and Tom. Her parents were Satira and Alexandra Broughton. They were both farmers and grew and sold their produce to the community. At the age of eight years old, a very close friend of the family called Miss Taylor helped to raise her in Kingston, Jamaica. Throughout her entire life, Grandma had a great work ethic. She loved to work and be of good use to others. Before she arrived in the UK, she, she had her own business where she, made, where she made clothes and sold them. She was a very independent and self-sufficient woman. She was married to George Christian in the UK for over 60 years and their children are Cynthia, Jennifer and Torres. Her grandchildren are Naomi, Nathaniel and Natalie. That's me. <laughs> and great-grandchild Amaya. Her sister, Auntie Olga, invited her to, the, to move to the UK. Her family members encouraged her to do this. However, this was a very bitter, bittersweet experience for her as she would be leaving her family, friends and country that she loved. But during the Windrush era, many Caribbeans arrived with the hope of creating a better life for themselves and their families. And to note, they helped 
to rebuild this great country from post-war, which I believe they did very well. In her younger years in the UK, she worked various jobs, but she found her true calling as a nurse. Her quest in becoming a nurse was initially faced with some hostility and prejudice from those senior to her. However, this did not stop my grandma. She was determined to reach her goals and never gave up. She deserved another round of applause for that, I think. <laughs> I recall a story she shared with me that in uh, one of her placements, the Queen would be visiting all the nurses and staff. My grandmother was so excited to, to finally meet the Queen. However, while all her fellow colleagues were lining up to meet the Queen, being the only black nurse working on that day, her manager told my grandma that she had to stay in a small back room and do menial tasks out of sight from the royal visit. This was the turning point for my grandma, who was deeply hurt from this experience and others too. She left that job and from then on, she made up in her mind that she would no longer take any more prejudice or racism. She became a little bit more sassy, cheeky, funny, and would take no more nonsense from anyone. I wanted to share this story with all of you today as I'm grateful to my grandma and others like her that paved the way for me and other generations. We only need to look around this congregation and walk around Bedford and see how much things have changed and how far we have come. Can we take a moment to celebrate the Windrush generation? Thank you for standing up tall and never giving up. She was a great believer in people coming together. United we stand, divided we fall. From then on, she found favour with her work colleagues and bosses. She was such a humble, caring and kind nurse at various hospitals. She worked in the chest clinic, North Wing Bedford Hospital, for many years until her retirement. Her nickname at work was Chrissy. She was a much loved and respected colleague to the point that at her retirement, the wonderful consultant, Dr. Riding, and other doctors stormed into HR and requested for her to stay on, but it was against the policy for people to carry on working past the age of retirement in the NHS. She remained great friends with them too. One of her colleagues, who we call Auntie Sally, was a wonderful friend to my grandma, who sadly passed away, but they are now together again in heaven reminiscing the good old days. And I thank you, Angel, Sally's sister, for being here today. Can we give her a round of applause as well? <clears throat> she served as a nurse for over 35 years and then worked as a senior, a senior carer in the nursing homes till the age of 70 years old. She loved to work. She never liked sitting down for too long. She always enjoyed keeping herself busy. Grandma was a woman of faith. She got baptised at Miracle Church of God in Christ many years ago. She served the church and her community faithfully and was a great supporter of the ministry and overseer born. Grandma was known as a very quiet, gentle, humble and soft-spoken woman in the church. She would always sit in the back row right down there. But when the spirit came down upon her, she would end up at the front of the church. Those who grew up in this church know what I'm talking about. She was a woman that felt it was her duty to serve. Her mindset was it was not what she could get from others, it was what she could do for others. If she could help somebody, then she knew that she was not living in vain. There are so many people that grew up in this church and in the community that she supported and encouraged in many ways. She was such a humble woman. She would look stunning for church but would still put on the apron and gloves with a mop in her hand and clean the church. That's who she was. Every act of kindness she showed was an act of worship unto God. She was also a woman of style. Grandma took great pride in dressing in her Sunday best. And the only person she trusted to dress her in the style that she loved and was known for was Michael Bailey. <laughs> Stand up, Michael Bailey. I'm sure many of you have stopped at the traffic lights of Harper Street and admired the outfits on the window display and I'm delighted that you are here today. Thank you so much, sir, for always making my grandma feel special when she walked through your doors. Can we give a round of applause 
to Michael Bailey. We love you, sir. We love you. Grandma was a fantastic wife, mother, grandmother, auntie, friend. She was loyal and trustworthy to those who knew her. She showed so much unconditional love to us all. She believed in aspiration. She encouraged all her children to thrive in their talents and ability. She would work longer hours to support our education and help provide us with better opportunities. She encouraged my auntie Jenny to be a hairdresser. She encouraged my mum to pursue a career in HR. She encouraged my uncle Horace to be a great chef. She encouraged and invested in her grandchildren to pursue a career in the entertainment, media and education sector. Her legacy of kindness, love and self-sacrifice will remain and live with us all. And it is our duty to pay it forward in the various works that God entrusts us to do. I'm nearly finished. Grandma was a fantastic listener and confidant. There are many people here today who have experienced her wisdom and counsel. She was that woman that you could tell anything to and you knew it would not be shared with anyone. She would listen without judgment and respond with profound words that were full of hope, compassion and wise guidance. People trusted her and loved her for it. Grandma, during your final years on earth, in the moment of your need, sorry, in your moment of need, there are many who have shared today and who are present in the congregation that were there for you. That includes my beautiful German shepherd dog, Gracie, who loved you dearly. It's because of the light of kindness you shared all your life that people were willing to do the same for you. I'm honored and grateful to God that he saw fit for us to be with you as you took your final breath in the presence of myself and your daughter, Cynthia, who cared for you faithfully. Well done, Mum. Well done. Before your final breath, you looked up and I can only imagine that you saw all your siblings, your parents, Miss Taylor, friends, husband and your son with all the angels in heaven calling and welcoming you home grandma eva christian what an incredible woman you were you will remain forever in our hearts you fought the good fight of faith you served your husband family friends church brethren and community with humility love integrity and compassion and there is a quote from I'm trying to Pericles, Peris something. Pericles, you will know, you will know Fleur. Persicles, something like that. From the Prince of Tyre, Shakespeare. What you leave behind is not what is engraved in stones of monuments, but what is woven in the lives of others. You once said to me, Grandma, that I was like a rose blooming in a bitter weeded garden. Well, Grandma, can I let you in on a secret? You are that rose in my life and others. May you bloom on forever in heaven and in all our hearts. May you rest in peace. Sleep on, my beloved, and take your rest. I thought at this time we could all just stand and celebrate a granddaughter, a daughters and the family put together. It wasn't always easy, but to have such a day like today.